Well, there's Nest Tilson here, and in this little video, I'd like to show you how to use Stair Designer to build a rail, um, a wooden handrail with um, spindles on an existing stair. Now, the existing stair can be in cement or stone or metal, doesn't really matter. Um, but Stair Designer is a very useful tool for building onto an existing stair uh, handrails for doing the design and for getting all the cutting lists and uh, the different parts. So uh, let's start with um, this uh, simple stair that I've just, uh, just quickly thrown together in Stair Designer. It's just a simple half turn stair. If we look at it in 3D, we can see that I've just put in some steps. The, I've given a, a texture, a marble texture to these steps. Um, let's put underneath the steps a cement stair. So to get a cement stair, I'm going to go into parameters. I'm going to take cut string. And I'm going to add a cut strings, but it's not the cut string I'm actually adding, it's actually what they call here a soffit. A soffit will be actually a full bodied uh, cement stair. If I click so on OK, we can see the stair designer has actually put in underneath the steps a full bodied cement stair. Now, what's interesting is that in stair designer, you can put in this stair uh, using um, sizes that you've actually measured on the site on an existing stair and stair the designer will automatically build you in 3D and in 2D of course all the, pa the characteristics of the cement stair. We're going to add on to this cement stair now we're going to add on a handrail. The first thing we're going to ha add on is we're going to add on a lower rail and this lower rail I'm going to give it a, a square section and it's going to be a lower rail that actually follows the movement of the steps. So let's add here a uh, lower rail and to add the lower rail we're going to use the string board parameters uh, command and we're going to add string boards but these string boards are going to be a bit particular string boards. They're actually going to be string boards of 50 millimeters thick and the step penetration into the string board will be exactly the same as the thickness of the string board, that is the steps will actually go through the string board. This is not very important for us. This is this is going to make the steps go underneath the rail, in fact. The width of the string board is we're going to give it a 50 millimeter width. So uh, the string board will only be 50 millimeters wide. And we're going to give it a width above the nosing of 80 millimeters. That means that the, the string board will follow above the nosing at 80 millimeters. Um, if we click on OK, we'll see what that will do. Rebuild the stair. And we will see that stair designer automatically places what he calls it, what Stair Designer calls a string board, whereas we're in fact calling this, in fact, a lower rail. Onto the lower rail, let's add the actual handrail. We have handrails, and we're given a handrail a square section of 50 by 50. And Stair Designer, what's in the handrail? Following the lower rail, of course, perfectly parallel to the lower rail. Now, um, by default, Stair Designer has put in turn spindles. Uh, these are given, the actual shape of the spindles is of course given by the spindles uh, command. Um, let's uh, say that we don't really want turn spindles, but what we're really wanting is um, rails. Um, stainless steel rails which flow up at the same, at the same slope as the lower rail and the handrail. Uh, this is a new function of the new version of Stair Designer which you can download from my website. Um, to do this, I need to put in some posts, some new posts around the stair. Putting the new posts is just the classical um, stair designer function. We just click right on the ends of the strings and we will just put in the parameters of the new posts. I'm going to put in um, new posts that are the same widths as the string and they're square. Same widths as the handrails that is. And I'm just going to put them in its square. And this will give us a nice, a nice design. We'll just put them in, and you'll see the design. Let's put the new posts in. Okay. And this one here, giving it zero offset on the left and the right hand side, makes the new posts exactly the same width as the handrails. And let's um, put a new post in here. And extremity new posts. And 50, 50. Right. The last 
last one here. So we get the beginning new post. D by 50. Okay, so if we have a look at the 3D, we can see that now the stair designer has just put in the appropriate new posts at the corner at the turns of the stair. We can see here that the bottom of the new post is calculated at a specific distance below the lower rail, but it doesn't step doesn't go on the step. To make it go on the step, we need to adjust the, the height of the bottom of the new post. It's pretty easy. We just go over to the new post to click on it and use the parameter here base height from the ground. And we're going to give it a base height as we can see the new post should rest on the sixth step. The sixth step is six times 175 riser height, 1775 high, and that is 1050. And if we look in 3D, it should now rest on the step, which is much better, much easier to assemble if the new post is actually on the step. All right, let's now turn these. Let's get rid of the of these spindles, turn spindles, and give the stair a more modern aspect and give it rails, yeah, stainless steel rails. To do that, we're going to do change the parameters of each flight. For this first flight, we're going to click twice on the first flight. And we're going to take off left banisters and give left tube railing. Same with the right-hand side. We're going to double-click on the second flight and do the same thing. Take off the banisters and put, it, put on tube railing and this one too left banisters tube railing now if we look at the stair in 3D we can see that we actually have tube railing all the way around the stair and the stair has a much more modern aspect what is interesting is that the the railings along the stair will now follow the design of the stair if I need, for instance, here we have um, actually put in railings on the ins inside which follow the curve of the steps, but it's very easy if we just take the parameters of the flight and we say that in fact on the right hand side we need straight handrails and straight string boards. We have to of course change the widthing by 50 and 80 as it was before. We can do the same for all around, all around the stair, changing it to the straight, straight, uh, straight string board and handrail, and we'll do the same one here, straight, giving it the same width and the same height above the nosings. And in this case, now the the handrail on the right hand side is now made only of straight parts. So here we have the stair in plan and I've actually added um, on this stair I've added uh, intermediary new posts to stiffen the actual rails here and I've straightened out the this the right hand rail so that it doesn't follow the steps but is actually optimized for the uh, slope of the stair as a straight section. If we look in 3D here's the finished model of the of the handrails and we can see that in fact the rail is not fits nicely on the stair there's not too big a distance between the new posts and the stiffness and gives a, a, a very nice design for this particular concrete stair of course it so I, I hope that's been of interest to you and has shown you some of the some of the possibilities of using stair designer for uh, this particular task which is putting a handrail onto an existing concrete stair uh, thank you very much for listening and be seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.